Hey everybody! In this video, we're going to share with you what the most commonly asked question is that our beginner dance students have asked. That's right. And we're going to cover a question that you actually should be asking yourselves to be better dancers. That's right. So for those of you who haven't met us, this is Joel. And this is Clara. And we've helped hundreds of couples through our Natural Dance Method program. Exactly. We've used a three-step system that's proven to bring couples from being cringeworthy to confident, whether it's dancing at their weddings, at parties, or on vacations. That's right. So stay till the end of the video, and we'll show you how to apply to work with us. And make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell down below so that you guys know whenever Clara and Joel post a new video. So let's get started. So the most common question that we get asked from our beginner dance students is, Hey Joel, hey Clara, are we doing this right? The answer is simple. But before we get to the answer, we need to understand partner dancing is based on lead and follow. Mm -hmm, exactly. That communication is so key to get the couple dancing together. That's right. So if the lead intends to do something like, let's say, an underarm turn, mm -hmm. and the follow does the underarm turn, then you have success. Then we're right. Exactly. <laughs> then you're doing it right. Exactly. So many people are already dancing and they go, hey Joel, hey Clara, is this right? And we kind of look at it and go, uh, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's right. So here we're going to give you a couple of examples of kind of what do we mean by is it right? Or maybe also is it wrong? All right. Mm -hmm. So here I'm dancing with Clara and I want her to do an underarm turn, right? And so here I'm leading Clara into an underarm turn. And then we finish off and then we want to ask ourselves, is that right? Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Well, was my intention to do an outside turn for Clara? Yes, it was. And did I respond and do an outside turn? Yes, yes you did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so so it say, was right. Exactly. Now, if I did the same thing and I am intending for Clara to do an outside turn and then now Clara does, for instance, an inside turn. <laughs> That's where we would say, no, it is that not right. right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Another example would be, for instance, if I am trying to do a stationary turn and then Clara all of a sudden tries to then, oh, she's, she's passing. Oh, she's I'm like forcing past him. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Then we look at that and go again, what is the interaction between the two dancers? What was the lead trying to intend and what did the follow actually dance? That's right. So if he intended for me to do a stationary turn, then I should have done a stationary turn. Exactly. And that would be right. Exactly. Now, what ends up happening for so many couples out there is that there is choreography that they're trying to execute or memorize and then produce, especially if they're doing something like a wedding dance. And this is why in this channel, we continue to talk about not <laughs> doing choreography <laughs> because these sort of interactions end up happening too many times. Mm -hmm. Someone thinks that it's supposed to be this and then someone forgets maybe, oh, and it's supposed to be that. And then we're not listening to each other anymore. Exactly. So we say many times in all of our videos that communication is key. Yeah. So we always have to have a leader sort of determining what the action should be and then the follow responding to that action and listening to it. Exactly. And that's actually what keeps you guys together and dancing as one. So even though maybe Clara was right with the choreography because she wasn't following what I was doing, we were not dancing together. And especially if we're doing this in front of people, again, if this is your wedding and we're dancing in front of guests, they'll know it's wrong because all of a sudden they're looking at Joel and they're looking at Clara and going, Hey, we're not something is mismatched. There. Exactly. <laughs> Even though maybe Clara was right in the choreography. And again, that's why we say we would rather have you learn how to dance, learn how to communicate and connect instead of trying to memorize choreography. Mm -hmm. And that way you have a genuine, authentic experience instead of something memorized and programmed and possibly could get wrong. Exactly. So whenever we have new students, one of the biggest rules that we always tell them from the very beginning is there is no right or wrong. There is only together. Exactly. We're going to say that again because it's so important. <laughs> There is no right or wrong. There is only, only together. together. Yeah. And boy, we're really together today, aren't we? <laughs> so go and write that down in your notebook. Mm -hmm. Because and remember that. Again, if we're now dancing and maybe we should have done an, a passing turn and I lead Clara into a stationary underarm turn, that's totally fine. 
you guys as our guests in our wedding would be like, wow, they're dancing so nicely together. Yeah, they don't know the choreography. They don't know that you um, might have had something else in mind. Exactly. All they see is that you are together. Yeah, and if you're not doing some sort of performance and you're just out dancing, whether it's again at a party, um, at an event, um, or even just on vacation, and you're having that time of dancing, then we're not doing choreography. Clara's dancing with me, we're having fun and we don't have to worry about the right choreography. Yeah? That's right. So keep in mind, again, Joel and Clara's rule is there's no right or wrong, there's, there's only, only together. together. Now before we go on to the question that you really should be asking yourselves, we want to hear from you. Write down in the comments below what other questions do you guys have as beginner students that Joel and Clara can help you with. So once our students establish a good connection between the two of them and understand the skills involved in dancing together so that they're right, the question that we'd rather have them ask us is, hey Joel, hey Clara, how do I make this better? Yeah, and instead of better, you can think of how do I make this more natural? How do I make this less awkward? Mm -hmm, exactly. So what we do is we use this in a very, I don't wanna say difficult, but more complicated process because we as teachers need to see what they're doing while they're dancing. That's right. When you're learning how to dance, you really need that direct personal feedback as to what you're doing and how you can improve it. Yeah, so as professionals and as experienced professionals um, teaching <laughs> so, many teach so many beginners, <laughs> um, we've used an acronym called WEST to help us kind of assess how the students are doing and what exactly they need to be able to improve themselves. And we're gonna go over WEST with you right now. Yeah. Okay, so we've got ourselves W, and W stands for w. weight. That's right. <laughs> I don't think I can do the other letters with my fingers. <laughs> so here I'm dancing with Clara, and I want her to step backwards for whatever we're doing, whether it's a separation or um, a, a home base action, whatever it may be, yeah? And so when we're doing this now, if all of a sudden I'm doing this, Yes, she's going backwards, and yes, we're doing this correctly, but we're not doing it so naturally. Yeah? That's right. He really used mostly his hands to get me to go backwards. Exactly. And what that did was it really pushed my upper body to go. Mm -hmm. um, but what we want is actually his weight to be moving me because that will be such a stronger lead. Exactly. So if I demonstrate that a little bit better, my weight ah, makes the lead more clear and the movement more natural. That's right. I still stepped backwards, just like Joel said in the other one as well, mm -hmm. but this was much more smooth and much more natural looking. Exactly. So we watch the weight first to see if we're getting ourselves in the right directions and that communication is there. Okay. Moving on to the second element, which is E for energy. Energy. Exactly. <laughs> so say for instance now I'm dancing with Clara and I'm leading her to do an underarm turn. Do to do, do. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Maybe you noticed but Clara just turbo boosted her dancing. I had a big power. <laughs> yes, she did. She had a lot I of energy. I turned on the energy. <laughs> <laughs> Which sometimes can be good, but it wasn't a matching energy. So here, Joel was trying to get Clara to do a turn that was, uh, we'll say, a slower turn. Yeah, possibly we're dancing to a slower music. And all of a sudden she sped up. Yeah. <laughs> and so we'd yeah. say, it's not really now matching. Yeah, so there's a communication uh, mismatch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the follow should always match the lead's energy. So that way, if he wants to do a slow turn, then I know and respond to that and do a slow turn as well. If there's faster paced music and it requires a faster turn, or if he just feels like spinning me faster, then I should feel that energy and again, respond to it. Yeah, and once we got that connection, then it looks better, it looks more natural. Yeah, yeah. just very harmonious. Exactly. Into the third part of our West, yeah, is space. Yeah, and so sometimes couples will be dancing and then they want to, for instance, do some sort of turn. Yeah, Oop. hello. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe the space isn't quite right. And here in our quick little demonstration, we showed that the space wasn't enough. There was too, we'll say, congested. Congestion, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, and Claire ended up kind of giving me a little <laughs> bit of a shoulder check at the end. Yeah, especially when we're doing a turn and we have a free arm, it's easy to have like to be bump each other mm -hmm. um, that way. So you really want to give each other a little bit more space. Yes. And 
not just a little bit, but sometimes there's too much and we have to contract the space. And that's where, again, we assess and help our students kind of understand what is the right space for the different moves that they're trying to do, mm -hmm. okay? The final thing that we're gonna talk about in our West is time. Ooh, I can do this one. Ooh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is a W. T for time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, T for time. Exactly, so for instance now, as I'm dancing with Clara, and I'm getting her to do an underarm turn, and here we go, and all of a sudden, whoop, yeah, I don't give her enough time to then complete what it is that I was asking her to do. Yeah. Yes, it was very, I was taken aback <laughs> that yeah. I had to kind of like do it quickly. Yeah, so did she do again the underarm turn that I asked her to do or that I led her? Yes, so again, we are right, but we could have danced it much better or Hopefully more, you saw more naturally. that it didn't really look very natural and not very harmonious. Exactly, so as I'm dancing with Clara and I'm trying to get her to do a certain action, I do need to allow her to have enough time to complete whatever it is that I'm trying Thank to Thank you, Joel. Get her. That was quite nice. Yeah, you're very welcome. <laughs> Let's do a high five for that one. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. So in summary, when you are thinking about your dancing, yes, we want to be right. Yeah, because we have an intention and then a reaction. So as long as that's already done, then we want you guys to understand how do we become more natural? How do we become more fluid? How do we dance better? So when you're a more experienced dancer, you can, you can figure out how to do this on your own. But when you're first starting out, it's very important to have that experienced third eye watching you. Or fourth, third, fourth, fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Many eyes. <laughs> Watching what you're doing, assessing it, and helping you improve. That way, it'll look more natural and not so awkward. Mm -hmm. And you'll have the confidence that you know you're doing it right and better at the same time. If you struggle with dancing with your partner and you're stressed out about dancing in front of other people and you want to build lifelong skills that you can use whether it's at your wedding or any other dance opportunity, well, we can help. We have helped hundreds of couples go from feeling lost and awkward to being very natural and confident in their dancing. That's right. They've gone from cringeworthy to confident using our proven method through our natural dance system. So if you're interested, set up a cons free consultation call with Joel and Clara, and the link is in the description below. And if you're part of the program, you'll be able to have these four eyes working with you guys <laughs> to make sure you're not only right, but better with your dancing. Yeah. And for some other free help from Joel and Clara, check out our free masterclass. There's a link down in the description below where you can register and learn about our proven three-step system that's helped so many couples. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Thanks very much again for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.